going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm gonna take a second, let a few guys get in here. We're out live at the fishing pond in between storms. But as the title uh, mentions, we're out here pond fishing because the whole Tampa Bay is currently being destroyed by red tide. And I do mean destroyed. I just got your notification. There are literally thousands of pounds of dead fish being removed uh, out of the bay daily. So, via heavy machinery, boats. It's really sad, guys. And, you know, at first, when this red tide kicked off, it was little bait fish. It was pig fish. It was pen fish. You know, little things. But now we're starting to see the Goliaths and the Tarpon, Dolphin. William, Captain William Wise, one of our ambassadors, actually uh, cast netted a dead dolphin at one of the markers the other day. He, uh, he pulled up his son through it, through the net. And he's like, holy cow, this thing's either plumb full or I got a body in here. Well, come to find out, he's pulling it up. And it did look like a body. He thought he had a body for a minute. But it was actually a body of a different kind of mammal, which is the porpoise. And uh, I've never seen seen that before. Guys. Shocking to me. But on a positive note, I'm out here throwing a new bladed jig that I got off of uh, from Catchco, uh, right off of their website, Shop Carl's. I don't know if you guys have ever used these. They seem to be pretty popular. Uh, it's really really thin as you can see here but it's got a lot of weight it's got this bottom area here I guess to add weight and uh, to push water and also this is on like a ball bearing swivel this little bladed spoon but you could cast this thing a mile and it kind of acts like a rattle tap in a way but another thing I haven't showed you guys is the absolute brand new Okuma Helios SX reel with the Okuma psycho stick now guys I've been using this setup for about a month and a half. I like to use the stuff before I come to y'all with it. But I'm telling you, if you're looking for a beginner setup, and I mean, this ain't cheap by any means. I mean, you're talking 300, probably 380 bucks for the combo. Uh, maybe a little more, don't quote me on that. But if you're looking for a good setup that's not gonna make bait casting frustrating, this might be a way uh, to look, just depending on your budget that is. But super smooth reel, I've only bird nested this thing one time and I've used it at least a dozen times now. So, really good, good setup and I've used it and I've thrown a lot of different lures on this outfit too. Anybody in yet? Yeah, we got plenty of people in. What are you fishing for? So right now guys, I'm fishing for a largemouth. Um, we're not in any major or minor feeds. It is right after a storm. We got a pretty good wind out here, which you probably can hear. I'm just trying to get, and I'm out here a little early. Typically, you know, you want to try to be out here around between six and eight o'clock for the best bites in these ponds. What depths are you fishing? Well, the depth right now in this pond is anywhere from 25 feet, and it has a steep drop off. And then the bank right here is an average is two to four feet, and it goes out about 10 yards, and then it drops off drastically. So the good news is this lake is, a, is what I call a clear lake and it has a lot of vegetation and underwater vegetation that is and it really is a really clear spot. Right now it doesn't look it too much because we've had a lot of, a lot of rain and it's murked things up a little bit. But this is what we're out here doing and uh, we wish we were in the bay. We're going to be... Me and Chris, so Chris is recording right now. You can say hello, Chris. What's up, guys? Hey, make sure if you have any uh, fishing questions or comments, make sure you uh, put them here in the chat, and I'll be sure to at, or ask Josh, make sure he answers them. Yeah, so guys, just so you all know, I've been absent for, you may have already noticed, uh, what has it been? It's been a couple weeks since I posted a video, so what happened? Well, quite a few things happened. Red tide happened. That's one. But really the big thing that's occurred right now is we were demolishing my house a little bit or demoing it. We ripped up all the tile and 
then we, me and Chris had to go through and scrape the floors and uh, rent the machines to do that. And then uh, we pulled up all the baseboards, we painted, put down new flooring. And that took about eight or nine days. It took a little longer than we were anticipating. I think that concrete work was a little more brutal than I was hoping for. But uh, that's where we've been, guys, so I apologize. I have a lot to catch up. I gotta get back to filming. I wanted to come on here, hopefully catch a fish. Come on, Chris. When will we be back at the Skyway? Well, I'm going out in the boat. Me and Chris are going tomorrow, guys, on the boat. I have not assessed. Right now, I have my charters even postponed because I wasn't going to take them out there to get sick, to breathe in the red tide, and just to see fish dead everywhere. Even though I caught a lot of fish, my uncle came in uh, from up north, and he wanted to catch redfish with his new wife. Well, me and Chris went out. Chris threw the cast net. It took us a lot of throws to find white bait. And we did find white bait stayed alive, which was amazing. And then we ran around the South Shore and we honestly caught, I don't know, 20 nice fish. A lot of redfish, which was really shocking. And uh, one snook that was, I think, 28 inches, 27 inches. Yeah, almost 30. So almost 30 inch snook, which was really good. The fish stayed alive and uh, the bait stayed alive the entire time. So anyways, the stuff is spotty. So the way red tide works, some people think, well, when red tide comes in, it just stays in that area. Well, it doesn't. It moves with the, the tide. Yeah. So you may have an area that's been completely plagued one day, and then the next day, it might look totally different. Um, what line are you using nowadays? Well, right here on this particular one is the 10-pound soft steel. This is just 10 pound monofilament stuff. Oh, actually, this is fluorocarbon, soft steel. Um, on the Okuma, again, the Psycho Stick, and just so y'all know, if y'all can see it here, maybe you can't. This is a 7.2, 8 to 17 pound, 1 8 to 5 8 uh, ounce is what it can hold up to. But I find that this has got a great action for various lures. I've thrown all kinds of things, anything from a rattle trap to this bladed jig to even a, um, a couple swim baits and a Senko. And it worked, for, it worked well for, with all those lures. But it, ha it has a good backbone with a fast tip. What are you saying, Chris? Jonathan asked, what do you charge for a charter? Whoa. He did charge for chargers, but now he's uh, he almost killed himself. Oh, it's the grass, guys. So what happens is this bladed jig has a treble. That's the problem with using the treble. It'll get caught on the grass right there on the edge. And if you ain't careful, it, it comes at you at 100 miles an hour. So, um, guys, I do six-hour trips, and I charge $700 um, for a six-hour trip. So that's what, what I currently do, or that's what we did. Right now, I'm not, I mean, we're very selective with uh, how many trips we do, even before red tide. But uh, now with red tide, I don't know what I'm gonna cut back to just because, I don't know. It's just, we got a lot of other things that we need to take care of with getting our water fixed and cleaned and try to prioritize, you know, that over making money off of it, our fishery when it's being destroyed. Rick Hick says he's noticed you've lost some weights. Congratulations. Yes, sir. I've lost, uh, what, what am I? I've lost 32 pounds. Jonathan now says, how do you like that setup? I love this setup, guys. This setup is, uh, like I said, I've, I've really been breaking it in for the past month and a half. And uh, I really like the real, I really like the feel of the rod. And some things, I'm going to do a whole video, not, not live, but you can't really see the detail on this rod. I've never seen anything quite like it. Look how beautiful that is. It almost looks like scales, salty scales. Like, come on now. It's amazing. It's pretty wicked, guys. But uh, I've never seen a rod like that that hadn't been uh, custom wrapped. And this is right off of their, their shelves. It comes to your door just like this. Jonathan said awesome. Hey, sorry if I'm missing some of your questions, guys. 
the chat keeps disappearing and I have to go in and, and activate it again. I don't know why they don't just leave it up, but whatever. <laughs> Sam just asked, what is that setup? <laughs> it's a beautiful setup. <laughs> Sam, uh, go back, or well, I guess he can't go back now, but when the video posts to the uh, YouTube page, you could check it out. I think he's mentioned it a couple times. You know, it's just an Akuma Helios. Psycho Stick and a Helios uh, bait casting reel. With some soft steel 10 pound to this. Yep, soft steel Floral. 10 pound fluorocarbon. Heads up. What length rod is it? It's a 7.2. Seven 7.2. Two. Seven two. A lot of questions about the rod. Well, I caught something here. Yeah, you got one. Hey guys, just to let you know, I did catch a fish. Chris caught a fish on his first cast. Lucky dog. But he was throwing a spinner bait. What are y'all fishing now? Where are y'all fishing? Well, hey, we're just fishing ponds, man. Doing a little bit of pond hopping. Weed fish. Hey, what's the gear ratio on the reel? Someone asked. Uh, this particular one, I believe it's a 6-6 to 1. Let me uh, confirm that. <laughs> He's checking now. 6-6 six, six to 1, potentially. Yeah, I six, six to 1. Oh. There's another you on here. I must say, guys, look at this problem. The problem is, is I caught a fish because I'm wearing a salty scale shirt. Josh is wearing that Under Armour, man, and the fish can see him coming from a mile away. I love this. I'm about to bust one. It's going to be like a 12-pounder on live. Hey, if you guys want to watch a really funny video, Josh did the silly salmon in this pond like two years ago. So, another cool story for you. You got one? Oh, he's got a fish. Oh, he's wow. Oh, he was only a date. That one don't count anyway. So, uh, a really cool story, guys. I was out here about a week and a half ago. Eh, actually, it's been about two and a half weeks now. But uh, I was out here with my wife, and she looks looks over there on the shoreline, and she goes, "Is that dog getting in the water?" I said, "Well, it looks like it, baby." Well, the dog literally was getting in the water over there in that far corner. And I mean, it's just a speck. You can't barely make out what it is. You know, I'm thinking like, it's black, it's a Labrador. He's about to go swimming. Well, he comes swimming all the way across the entire lake. Well, we walk up to it and it's a dang pig. Where's the bow when you need it? Oh. Well, you wanna see something cool? Actually, Big O said, do a quick how-to on how to cast a bait caster. <laughs> Throwing you on the spot. Hold on, guys. I'm going to show, before he does that, I'm going to show Josh these pictures real quick on my phone. Get his first impressions live. We made the right decision. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. So, guys, we got a new hoodie coming out, and it is fire. Yeah, that's going to be good. All right, so you want a, you want a live bait caster tutorial? You guys love these bait cast tutorials. I swear that video gets a billion views. All right, hang on. I'm gonna reel it in. I'm gonna show you. How do you reel? Ice is slow. <laughs> Use the handle. I had a fish on live. I thought that was gonna be good. Uh oh. All right. All right, guys. So the quick breakdown. You got your knob here. Your tension knob. It's one of the most important things. All right. Typically, if I'm using a right-handed uh, setup here, so you're you're going to have your brakes usually on your left-handed side. Typically, I want to turn those brakes, um, you know, halfway on, halfway off. So you don't want them all on, you don't want them all off, in my opinion. So in order to make sure your cast, so your tension knob is the most important thing. This is your star drag, so this is going to adjust your drag. So you want to make sure that's not too tight, not too loose, and that's going to be based off of your, your, you know, the pound line that you're using. But in order to make sure you're not bird nesting, you want to be able to open your spool and your lure hit the ground without really bird nesting too much. So you can see that, that, how that got a bird nest. So pull your bird nest out. And this is why the tension knob is so important. You got to be careful, but that actually was a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. And of course, this little bitty line, guys. Watch me regret doing this right now. <laughs> hey guys, while uh, Josh goes ahead and gets that bird nest out, thanks Big O for, uh, you know, we, we were on a good bite there. Josh just had a fish. 
and you had to ask well the for line it. the line diameter is so small you see that very tiny knot that's what you get sometimes when you get this very small diameter line and you're trying to hand pick it out of here and you can't grab a hold of it check out bay boys 361 okay we'll be sure to do that This, uh, <laughs> of course, it's in the worst spot known to man. See, this is a live bait casting tutorial. This is all you need to know how to do. No, I can't even show them right now. Life problems. It's the struggle, man. I'll all tell right, you what. All right, so anyway, once you get your bird's nest out, hopefully, you won't have a bird's nest if you follow these instructions. So, reel up your line. So, you saw how that bird nest, once it hit the ground, there's my trouble. All right, tighten your tension knob, guys. Now, you see, I actually clicked it open and my lure doesn't fall to the ground. So bring it down a little bit, it's still not falling. So you want it to fall to the ground essentially without bird nesting. And this is what I recommend for beginners. It's gonna, you're not gonna get as far cast because the tension is on here, but it's gonna help prevent your bird nest until you get comfortable enough to really loosen this and sling it. I use mine a little looser than that, but then again, I know how to thumb my spool. If you know how to thumb your spool really well, then that's gonna help eliminate bird's nest. Back in action. See we can catch a fish real quick. What other questions you got? <laughs> Big O said, my bad, man. That ain't your bad. Hey, like I said, that's the reality of bait caster. Uh, I mean, I was showing you guys, so I needed a bird's nest anyway to show you. Let's go down since I missed that one. Maybe there's another one down here. Look at that, look at that big blue herring down there. I don't know if they can see. It's such a wide angle. Oh, okay. And I can't zoom. I tried earlier. Oh, now I can. Look at the bird. <laughs> you guys keep it real. Always. Can you make a soft plastic weedless without a twist lock hook? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Just um, you, you want to text pose it. I don't know how to. I mean, I can't explain it. I'm behind the camera right now. Flip it. And show show yourself. I don't have any uh, a hook. It would help if I had a yeah, hook. You could talk to him. What's your PB bass, Josh? PB bass is 11 pounds three ounces. About a year and a half ago, on a deep diver crankbait. Guys, if y'all have not checked out that video, you need to. It's one of the most fire bass videos I've ever had. My personal best bass is in there as well. Guys, that was a, a 50 plus pound bag in like three hours. It was insane. Never had that happen. Never experienced a bite like that before. But we caught, I don't know, 20 fish over eight or nine pounds. Tell you what, the bass are not wanting to feed in the pond. It's so hot out here, guys. I wouldn't want to eat anything either. Bite it slow. You're going to get one in the next three casts, Big O is pro projecting. Think so? Highly unlikely, Big O. Sam said, nah. Nah, well. I think he's saying, no, nah, you're not going to catch one in the next three casts. Get these weeds, though. Hey, guys. We'll be at ICAST. Uh, just so you know, Thursday, if anyone's going to be up there. Uh, we'll probably be at the Akuma booth. I do got to stop by and speak with uh, Gamagatsu. And uh, Dexter wants to talk with us.
Rich said it's too early in the afternoon for the bass to be feeding. Yep. Just wanted to get out of the office, guys. Do some recording. Well, I'm bringing you an update, guys. You know, it's been a couple weeks, like I said. That's primarily what this video is about. If I can catch a fish, that's a bonus. No, no questions right now. Hey guys, make sure you uh, ask some fishing questions while we're fishing. If not, we're gonna tune out. Hey, there's uh, plenty of people in here and we only got 14 likes. So I need you to smash that like button if you're tuned in. Do I, it, do it. Sam asked how the red tide is. Red tide is terrible, guys. It's that's why we're here. There he is. Oh, you got one. Look at that. That may have been five casts later. Oh, yay, baby. Right on the shoreline. It's a baby, though. Works. Got that trouble. Fish is a fish. Fish is a fish. Hey, look at that fatty. He's healthy, though. I tell you. Beautiful fish. Look at the, the greens on him. Ah. mean. Let him go. Let him grow. Ready? Hey, hey, hey. Five casts later. <laughs> Sam said five too many. We got it. We got it. One. So I'm. I got 50 50 right now. Lost one, caught one. What time will we be at ICAST? Uh, we'll be there probably close to opening. Pretty much a majority of the day. Yeah. Rick. We'll be there most of the day. Where are some good ponds south of the bridge? Because Pinellas County doesn't have a lot of ponds legal to fish holding decent fish. Well, here's the thing, guys. Everything is like no fishing these days. But, you know, I'm not saying break the laws, but... <laughs> what are they going to do? If it's not God's law, I guess sometimes man's law is meant to be broken. And if it's just fishing, they'll live with it. Unless you've got a Karen. You always got a Karen. Run away if you got a Karen. <laughs> always got a Karen. World's gonna end because you're fishing. But to answer your question, I mean, the ponds, the best ponds that you're gonna have are the community ponds, guys, that have been established. I mean, finding this you know use Google Earth and then find the ponds in the community and really you just got to go to them and fish them most of them are gonna have posted signs and the way I see it is hey they're gonna ask you to leave so fish it until they tell you to leave that's what I do hmm <laughs> rich said everyone here is a Karen Chris C said the Gulf Coast sucks this time of year. It hasn't stopped raining in about two months, minus a couple of days. Uh, Sam said fish should definitely pop off before the sunset. Uh, Rick asked recommendation lure in hot weather. For bass? Yep. Well, oh. again, I'm assuming that's what he's asking. There's nothing better than a Senko in a hot weather. You just slow it down and uh, I don't know. I found that the Senko is one of the best ones. But if you want to cover a lot of water, I like a rattle trap, personally. Chris is big on the spinner bait. What do you like, Chris? Tell him. Yeah, man, just get you, um, obviously the Senko is going to work. You can get a speed worm if you want the best of both worlds. So you get a worm with a little, uh, like, paddle tail on it. So you can swim it if you want. If you Texas rig it, you could swim it and you can crawl it on the bottom. So you have two very effective ways of uh, targeting the bass. So in that hot weather, you know, you can use it as a search bait or you could just drag it along the bottom and, uh, you know, hopefully nab a bite. Hey. When it gets hot, that bite gets slow. Let me ask you guys, what, what kind of content, knowing that we're facing this red tide situation, what kind of content would y'all like to see on the page? Yeah, that's a good one, man. What uh, what content are you guys wanting to see? Honestly, it's really weird in the bay. Like one minute we go out and it just looks like all death and we don't even want to be out there. 
and then other times you know the fishing's pretty decent so we're just playing it by ear every single day Just trying not to fall in these holes. Oh, so the pig that's the pig root. Oh yeah, it is. You can see where they they ain't been here in a minute though. Guy ran off. Yeah, Rubber of... worms, spinner baits, fish in the rain, Jonathan said. Get away from the heat. Hey, I gotta say guys, I've been using Shop Carls for a while too. I'm sure y'all have heard of them. Um, been very impressed if you join their club membership the prices are really good and the shipping is actually a lot faster than I thought it would be so something you guys may want to check out or may not I'm just letting you know that's an option out there that you could save some money and get it fairly quickly to your door how bad is the red tide by the Skyway fishing pier so last time we were out in the Skyway water looked pretty good um that was about two and a half weeks or two weeks ago yeah and some change yeah so i haven't been out there guys i ain't gonna lie this whole red tide scene has really got us down a little bit it's just because it's something that we can't personally control and uh i don't know we love we love our waters and to see how it was doing so well and to have those mistakes come and destroy it and take it all from you and nothing come about of it is really frustrating. So we're trying to figure out what we can do and what we can implement, if anything, to make some change. To make some change. Now, what I can tell you is that since my video that I post posted on my uh, Facebook page, pretty much calling out all the captains, which I did, and I'm not uh, shy to say I did, I've been seeing, and I don't know if it's from that, but I've been seeing a lot more activity from captains speaking up about it. And a lot of them admitted they didn't want to scare off clients before it got too bad. But really, guys, at the end of the day, this is more than about money. I understand they got to feed their families, but you ain't going to feed anyone if the whole bay dies. Amen to that. Hey. I got a question for you guys. What do you think about them opening up the redfish uh, trout and snook right before this red tide happened when they more than likely had a good idea that it was going to happen just with the whole Piney Point instance? Were you for the opening or uh, for, you know, keeping it closed? Make sure you comment down below. Oh, and if you guys aren't aware, they did close it all again, which we knew that was going to happen. Only for 30 days, though. No, it'll be longer than that. Well, the, I know it, w it should be, but how are you going to do in a 30-day executive order like that's really supposed to do something? Yeah, they need to keep it closed now for probably another year or two. I mean, maybe longer. I mean, that's the unfortunate part about it. But what is the point in closing this stuff and, and punishing the recreational angler when these guys, these corporations with the, the big pockets, keep killing everything and, and nothing coming about of it. I don't think it's fair to you. I don't think it's fair to me and the people who make their living off the water. And we can't get ahead, you know? It's like the bay was just coming back really, really strong. And then it's, so it's five steps forward, uh, 10 steps back. They say it's definitely going to be longer than 30 days. A lot longer. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, we were for the closure, keeping it closed. I can promise you guys this. We definitely uh, voted to keep it closed. I'm not shy about saying that. Josh is going to try to get one more fish 30 minutes in. Well, guys. I may have my charters on hold right now, but Chris is still running them. 
use code salty scales to save some money uh book with hill <laughs> use code salty scales use code salty scales save some money book you a trip with chris and if anything i know he gets you a lot of fish he'll give you the the dip net y'all can go out there and just dip them all up get all the fish you need plenty of catfish still to catch unbelievably oh he, he can put you on all the catfish you want <laughs> but all seriousness if you want to go out and try to have a good time we could crack some jokes and scoop some fish. How do you fish offshore of box of, oh, box of grenade? I guess. That might work. Huh? I don't know. Oh, how do you fish offshore at Boca Grande? It was a misspell. Yeah, that's not our. That's definitely not our uh, area of expertise. Yeah, most people I know fish near shore for like tarpons and things, and they're usually fishing like pass crabs and thread fans on the bottom. You got a lot of sharks though, over in that area. Other than that, I've never really fished. I fished over there just for tarpon. Feels like it's trying to rain again, guys, but doesn't. Uh, Appear to be too many rain clouds. That trouble, trouble hook is unforgiving. Yeah, we've watched Josh pick off plenty of uh, plants here. Oh, duck. That was a duck. <laughs> they do the same thing in Alaska. The commercial guys are killing the tourist season. Hence, I'll pass this year. Well, this is a big problem, guys, and everybody keeps nodding their head at it. But, I mean, Look at the Indian River Lagoon and all on the East Coast. That fishery was one of the most amazing fisheries there was for redfish and trout at one time. And they completely destroyed that. It's never been the same since that kill over there. And uh, we're gonna be facing the same things. Mankind destroys everything. I mean, this is the worst red tide that I've ever seen in Tampa Bay. And I've been fishing in Tampa Bay for over 20 years. So. Ooh. This is a good question. How do you keep your seaweed off your line? How do you keep the seaweed off your line at the Skyway? At the Skyway? Well, this is the thing. Typically, if you want to keep your seaweed off your line at the Skyway, you need to be fishing one man, one rod. And uh, that's how I do it. I don't typically sit a bait down unless I'm fishing for like tarpon straight down. Uh, if I'm fishing for grouper or snapper, I have the rod and, and reel in my hand. And ultimately, I let the bait go out, I bring it back in, let it go back out, and do the same thing over and over again. And that keeps keeps the grass at bay. Very hard to be productive and just sit like 10 rods down because they will collect everything under the sun. And uh, you might lose one too. Yeah. I'm stuck on piers from Sarasota to Punta Gorda. Do you have any favorites in between the two? Piers from where now? It is Sarasota and Punta Gorda. Oh man, Sarasota has some awesome bridges, guys. And I'm not going to blow out spots, but I'm telling you, go over there towards the jetties and those little bridges near those jetties are fire for big snow. They're not hard to find either, guys. All you gotta use is Google. If you got a question, Google it. It's so annoying, I gotta open up this live chat every like couple seconds. I, fin I fish Venice Jetty. Venice Jetty's awesome. Coco, Parker, is Skyway still a good place to fish during the red tide? Well, right now, I, I'm getting reports that the water's still fairly clean over there. So, I mean, it's just everywhere has been impacted somehow or another, guys. And this stuff's not going to go away quickly. I guess we'll walk down here a little ways and end this thing. Uh, but, no, uh, the Skyway, everywhere in the bay is going to be impacted. And it's just one of those things that's going to take time to recover. But like I said, the last trip we were out on the boat, me, Chris, and my uncle and them, we did really, really well. And we caught some really healthy fish. So 
Mother Nature is resilient, but we can't keep destroying it. So it'll come back, it'll recover. Jonathan, how can we stop the red tide? So how can we stop the red tide? That's a good question. Well, we gotta think about what causes the red tide. And typically, what causes the red tide, Jonathan, is negligence from human beings. So you got big corpse dumping nitrates by the hundreds of gallons or tons or millions of gallons in the bay. You have residents moving into the area by I think three or four hundred a day right now. And what's going on? They want a waterfront view. They want a beautiful view. So what do they do? They cut out the mangrove trees. What do mangrove trees do? They filtrate bad things such as fertilizer because everybody has to have a pristine lawn look like you know the joneses got to have a green lawn so we got to cut back on the fertilizers we got to cut back on the sewage spills with the there's sewage spills every year from st pete from tampa that can't keep happening i don't care if it's treated or not when you dump shit in the bay bad things happen that's where you get someone losing their leg to uh you know a brain eating or no, a flesh-eating bacteria, and then you, you got a brain-eating amoeba that people are dying from. This stuff is coming from sewage and fertilizers and nitrates. We gotta stop doing that, and there needs to be heavier penalties and heavier restrictions, and our tax dollars should be plenty enough to take care of spillage of, of uh, sewage in the bay, and it shouldn't happen. See, the problem is, uh, especially with St. Pete and Tampa's infrastructure, is they design the sewage systems for X amount of people. Well, we've gone way over that. I mean, just like Josh stated, we got hundreds of people moving in a day, and they're not doing anything to update our sewage systems except for continuing to dump the waste into the bay because that's their only solution because it saves them money temporarily but ultimately it's gonna lose everyone else money, like our captains, our uh, restaurants that feed people fish, you know, anybody that is involved with the water around here, it's, it's gonna hurt. Well, think about this. So HRK, their solution to all that nitrate water is to dump it, to drill down, and essentially dump it into the water table. Who in their right mind thinks of that? So if that happens, that's going to be like another Aaron Brockovich situation. You're going to have thousands of people getting cancer and among other things because these idiots decide that they want to go ahead and dump it into the water table instead of either transporting it or doing something else like that, which I understand that's a lot of stuff to transport, but you should have thought of that before you created such a thing right on our bed. Why are people moving to Florida? Because every other state's cold, has a state tax. Um, there are many reasons why people are oh, moving to Florida. What's happening right now is New Yorkers are flocking to Florida by the tens of thousands, guys, because of the COVID. Obviously, their impact of the COVID was very drastic. But among that, um, they're finding out that, hey, you could come down here and buy for one apartment that they pay for up there, they can come down here and buy three houses. And they're really driving up the price of the real estate market right now. So it's definitely a huge impact as to what's going on. But we're getting a lot of the Northerners and especially New Yorkers coming down to live in Florida. I just hope they, they're gonna bring their Southern, Southern charm with them, grass, uh, because I don't know, a lot of those guys aren't very nice. If you're a New Yorker, I do apologize. <laughs> if you're a New Yorker and you're watching this video, I'm, you're a good guy. I know it. In my heart. I feel it. Oh, I'm just fit, stating facts, though. So. Well, guys, I guess the fish aren't going to cooperate. We did get one, and then caught another, or had a, another little hookup. But guys, I wanted to come on here, give you an update, let you know, do a little demo in the house. So I'll be back now to my regular recording schedule. Gonna be at the ICAST. Gonna be fishing.
got a lot of new things I'm going to try to bring to you. Going to be doing a lot more teaching than fishing because of the bay situation. Probably some catching cooks too, you know. Get the dip net, go scoop up some uh, nice dead grouper and get you some fresh meat, right? Glad you're making fun of that situation. Get out of here. So, guys, pound that thumbs up button. Uh, follow us on Instagram or you can follow my personal, Captain underscore Joshua Taylor. And then Salty Scales also on Facebook if you guys want to follow there. We post some different things. But until next time, guys, I appreciate you joining and we'll see you on the